Hey, welcome to linear algebra, and welcome to section 1.1, systems of linear equations. Linear algebra is a huge topic. It encompasses a ton of theory and a ton of applications, especially now that we live in the digital era where computers tend to think the same way that linear algebra thinks. Uh, but at the heart of all of linear algebra is the idea of systems of linear equations. Uh, so that's where we're going to begin. And we're going to start with a few definitions just to make sure that we're all on the same page when we say something like linear. Uh, so let's start by talking about what we mean when we say a linear equation. So uh, here's Abel's definition of a linear equation. So a linear equation uh, the graph uh, the graph has no bends to it. It's straight. Um, when you think that's probably what you thought of when you thought linear or line. Um, and in two dimensions, uh, that's true. Uh, you know, a two-dimensional straight equation uh, with no bends in it looks like a line. Uh, and that's fine. In three dimensions, though, uh, the same no-bend idea uh, gives us a plane. We can't actually have a line in three dimensions as well. It's sort of a degenerate plane. But most generally, uh, we'll say that a graph in three dimensions that has no bends to it uh, looks like a plane. I didn't bring my four-dimensional grapher or my ten-dimensional grapher, uh, which we, you know, our brains can't visualize that. But fortunately, linear linear algebra can handle four dimensions, ten dimensions, a hundred dimensions just fine. You can see where it starts to get theoretical instead of just graphical. Anyway, so linear equation is a graph with no bends. Uh, we know what that means visually now, but what does it mean algebraically? Uh, so, as far as algebra goes, we'll say the equation has the form of a constant. times a variable to the first power plus another constant times another variable and so on. Uh, so example that you might already be familiar with would be a constant times a variable to the first power. Maybe I should make that more explicit. Variable to the first power. Variable to the first power. Constant times a variable to the first power plus another constant times a variable equals let's just say another constant. Okay, um, so that's a linear equation in two dimensions. There's an x and a y. Uh, we could have a three-dimensional version of this which would be something like 2x plus 3y plus 4z equals 12 and that equation would look like some sort of plane. Uh, it turns out pretty quickly that we have a hard time thinking up enough variables. So just a notational change because if you want to go beyond three dimensions then it's x, y, z, what, w? Um, so a notational change In linear algebra, instead of going x, y, z, uh, we're going to go x1, x2, x3. And then we can go as far as we want, right? We can have an x4, an x5, and x100 if we need to. Uh, so this same equation up here would look more like 2, x1, and these a little sub 1. So 2x1 plus 4, x2 equals 5. Or the three-dimensional version, of course, would become 2x1 plus 3x2 
plus 4 x3 equals 12. Okay, uh, so fair enough. That's what we mean uh, with linear equations. So anything that has a squared on the x or a square root or it's not a constant times x if it's x times y, right? all those are out. Uh, so in some ways that makes algebra pretty simple. Don't worry, we'll make it hard. I know some of you are saying, where's the challenge? But we will make it hard, don't you worry. Uh, okay, so that's a linear equation in two dimensions and a linear equation in three dimensions. Uh, let's go ahead and actually talk about what we mean when we say a system. So a system of linear equations. I think you probably know the story here. A uh, system of linear equations just means more than one. So if you have something like 2x plus 3y equals 5, and then you have a second linear equation, maybe x minus 2y equals negative 1, <coughs> now we have a system of linear equations. And you probably solved these things sometime when you took an algebra class. And you know that the solution numerically means find the x number and find the y number that you can plug into the first equation and into the second equation, and it works in both equations. Matter of fact, this would be a great time to pause the video, solve it however you remember to solve it, and if you don't remember it all, that's okay. But if you do have an idea, go ahead and pause the video right now uh, just see if you can knock this out, find the x and the y that solve both equations. Okay, so welcome back. Hopefully you eventually got to the point where you realized that if x is 1 and y is 1, uh, that will solve both equations. Uh, you put a 1 in the first equation for x and a 1 in the first equation for y and you get 2 plus 3, which does equal 5, and uh, 1 minus 2 does equal negative 1. And you may have solved this um, using a method called substitution. You may have solved it with something called elimination. You may have even graphed it. Um, graphically, uh, both these equations uh, make straight lines. And uh, whatever they look like, and I'm not going to be fancy about it, but whatever they look like, um, they do intersect at the point 1, 1. Uh, so you could have solved algebraically, you could have solved graphically. Um, that's fine. In three dimensions, uh, you are looking for the places where all three planes intersect. It's not enough that just two of them intersect, right? Because it has to solve all three equations. So I'm not even going to try to draw three planes graphically. Um, and actually, I'll attach another video to this lesson. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube that uses some nice uh, special effects. And you can look at that if you want to see some pretty pictures. Uh, but let me just point out again that our notation here in linear algebra uh, this same system would look more like 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 5 and x1 minus x2 uh, equals negative 1. And if we were graphing this, we'd actually have our axes labeled x1 and x2 instead of x and y. Uh, so let me just point out, and this is probably something you remember from algebra as well, uh, that several things can happen when you try to solve a system of linear equations. You can get a single solution like this. Uh, this is probably what you got most of the time in algebra, is you got the solution. In other cases though, and I'm not even going to make up equations, I think I'm just going to draw. So we'll just say this had it had one solution. There was a single point. It was an x and a y, but that counts as one solution. Um, 
There's also the possibility of having no solutions. I think you can probably imagine what that looks like. Uh, graphically, that just means that the two lines don't intersect ever. Uh, so that means parallel lines, pretend those are parallel. Uh, so it's possible to have no solution. It's possible to have one solution. And there's one other possibility, which is the idea of having infinitely many solutions, which means one of your lines looks like this, and your other line, I'm going to have to use a third color here, uh, your other line looks like that. And you say, where do those two lines intersect? And you say, well, there's a lot of places where they intersect. And if you want to talk points, there are infinitely many points where they intersect. Um, notice not every point in space is a solution. Not every point is an intersection point. Like zero, zero doesn't work. But there are infinitely many points that do work. So we'll say uh, infinitely many solutions. I'd just like to point out these are the only three cases for linear equations. Even in three dimensions, even in 10 dimensions, the fact that they're linear, that they don't bend, means you can't ever have one that just has two solutions. Think about what it would take to have two solutions. You'd have to have one of your linear equations, oops, wrong color, uh, one of your linear equations, and then for the other line to only hit it twice, it would have to uh, somehow bend to only get two solution points. So with linear, straight, non-bending equations, your only possibilities are no solutions, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. So we'll attach some more language to that in the next video. Uh, I will see you there.